This can be a really tricky question. So I want to outline it like this. Um, we have the estimated distance over the estimated speed. And we're asking, is that within uh, 0.5 hours, either up or down, plus or minus, of the real distance over the real speed? And statement one tells us the distance is within five miles uh, of, of the real distance and the speed estimate is within 10 miles per hour. Now, without knowing speed, I, I think that statement one is definitely insufficient. Without knowing distance, I think that statement two is definitely insufficient because we're looking at the ratio of distance to speed. And if you look at speed equals distance over time, if you use a formula that involves rate for speed, I highly recommend that you scratch that from your memory and you start using this. It's, it's much easier to remember and it's more robust. Um, and then we can reorganize this formula to solve for T by multiplying both sides by T and then dividing by S, which gives us time equals distance over speed, which makes sense because hours equals uh, miles over miles per hour. And when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by reciprocal, which would give you hours over miles and the miles would cancel, leaving you in hours which is why time equals distance over speed. So I know that I at least need them together. We're looking at a C or E answer here. Now, in order to make the largest difference, if, if I know, first of all, if I know that the estimates were within five miles and within 10 miles per hour, I think we can obviously assume that they were like 0.01 miles off and 0.01 miles per hour off. And this would make almost no difference to the original equation. So this would, if we did that assumption, this would definitely give us a yes answer. They are within this range, but can we get no answer? So this would give us a yes answer. Can we get a no to this yes, no question? Well, we're looking at either this or this situation in order to maximize the impact of these differences. Either you increase the top by as much as you can and decrease the bottom, that'll change the fraction by a lot, or you decrease the top and increase the bottom. Now, looking at, looking at the first option, if you make the distance really small and the speed really small, then these numbers will have a larger impact on the ratio. So I'm gonna make the distance one, mi one mile at 11 miles per hour. And that would be uh, one over 11th, one over 11 hours if we did the math. So if, if we plug those numbers in, the real, the real time is one 11th hour. Now, if I follow this process of maximizing the addition of the top, I'll get six on top and then subtract 10 from the bottom, I'll get one. Now it's going to take six hours and that is a difference of more than point five hours. So what I did in order to break this equation, notice we're playing devil's advocate again. We're trying to prove it insufficient. And I knew I could get a yes answer. It was really easy to get a yes answer while staying true to both of these rules, but it's harder to get a no answer. And so I said, how could I make this impact as big as possible? And I said, make the impact on top large and the impact on the bottom swing the other way as far as possible so that it would push the top higher and the bottom lower, both of which make the ratio bigger. And that made the ratio as large as possible. And I minimized the value of D and I minimized the terminal value of S to make it one after I subtracted 10 from it so that it would have the largest possible impact while still being easy to calculate. And so this obviously gives us an answer of E, insufficient even when taken together because I got a yes and a no answer.